Good morning. morning. Just one note in the bulletin. The second hymn is listed on the boards. It is 179. And the verses are correct. We just have repeated 205 twice. So forgive me for that. It's what you get when you go away. (laughs) Happy Easter time. We begin or continue with our opening acclamation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. As I was reading through these readings, I remembered there was an Episcopal priest whose name is actually John A. Sanford, who was also a psychologist. He studied Jungian psychology and applied his faith journey to his practice. In psychology, he produced a number of books using the themes of Christianity set against Jungian psychology. A psychologist friend handed me one of his books at a yard sale on evil. And having read that one, which was pretty fascinating, I read another of his books on Jacob. And it was titled, The Man Who Wrestled with God. As we know the story, as Jacob wrestled with the angel, he was touched on the hip and for the rest of his life caused to limp. Just to be clear, I want to assure you all that while it would be interesting to wrestle with God until God blessed me, during my time away, I tried to get in a little bit of extra exercise to rebuild the strength in my own hip. So if you see me limping a little bit, it's from that, not from God. It's interesting also to note in Easter, we read from the New Testament in all three readings. Another part of that that I think is fascinating is that the earliest of these writings is likely to be the passage that Margot read from Acts. Then comes the Gospel of John. Then the letter of 1 John. We see a development of the community of Christians and witness some interesting exchanges. I believe also that these passages lend a little bit of information to us about Paul's writing in the future. Paul liked to use monetary or business terms that could be interchanged with faith, as many people did. We see that reconciliation of all different forms is mentioned in our reading today, mainly set against sin. This idea, like a balance sheet, 
is that we're trying to balance our beliefs and our faith and how we attain a closer relationship with the one who left us, the Holy Spirit, and went back to be with his Father in heaven. I will also tell you that given the fact that I have been an associate and an assistant for the past eight years, I have probably preached the most about the gospel of second Easter, usually when the rector takes off, surrounded mostly by the discussion of Thomas. So it's not the direction that I first wanted to go to. In the same way, as I mentioned at the top about Jacob wrestling with the angel of God, I think these passages all connect in the ways that we are to wrestle a little bit, like Thomas did, to understand fully what is going on. We need to wrestle with these ideas and our faith. Like Jacob, they are all blessed by their understanding of Christ's model and how we need to share that model of God's love or light with a world that can be easily swallowed up into darkness, often referred to as of the world. Darkness is a reference to those things in the simplest form that are basically not of God. There is as well a slight hint of the interaction, I think, of the Trinity and that lack of continuity. God is Father and Creator, Jesus as the Teacher and Son, and the Holy Spirit as the one who is known as the paraclete, or the one that comes alongside, that will help guide those who are faithful in that path towards the light and away from darkness. I think we all, at different times in our life and our own faith journey, wrestle a bit with certain questions. I think we also wrestle with the fact that we're not sure sometimes if we're headed towards the light of God or towards the darkness of worldly things that draw us away from God. And I think that beyond Thomas, all the disciples were wrestling with something. Maybe different things or all the same things, but they were definitely concerned about the earthly power of the Romans. The repercussions that could negatively impact them from the worldly power that is held at that time. And truly, their fear of being broken up into small groups or separated not only from God, but also from each other. So as we see in that passage from the gospel, Jesus comes back to assure them I believe that in his appearing, he not only gives them reassurance of his coming resurrection, but also his reassurance that he is still in the physical realm. And in that realm, his ability to transcend death itself. All these form the promises that are being kept and need to be passed on to those who have not witnessed Jesus firsthand, what these people, having spent three years with him, most likely, had witnessed and had felt. They were the closest ones to him, and they were reassured. And I think they did a thing that both Acts and 1 John explains. In Acts, we see simply that they gather together likely and probably for their own safety. But then they realize that as a community of loving Christians, they should also share all things in common to help one another out as a community will. This form of community, while powerful and effective, at the same time, to corporately gather and arrange for how they move forward. They had to come up with a way that they could go ahead in this dark world. Knowing also that at some point they have to go into all the world as they were instructed. But for now they were able to establish a starting point, a gathering point where they could share all things. Now all of us know the rest of the story 
and the fact that that only really works for a short period of time, but it gave them time to regroup. What I also think is very interesting and likely is that the letters of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John may not have been directly written by John. Now, we can't be certain of that, but we do know that it was likely one of his followers who either wrote it down for him or were part of one of the original house church settings. Most likely, even if it was written by John, it was for that house church. And it was done to establish some norms of the community that they were trying to maintain. In this passage, we also learn that they too were wrestling with the struggle that I think we all face on a daily basis. They were struggling to understand God and reconciliation, not only of their faith, but also of their direction of having to be both in the world and in a world that is filled with darkness, how they can find the light, that light that they were seeking of Christ, that light of God the Father. It's good to remember at this point as we wrestle that it is through Christ that we are viewed by the Father. The Father, the Creator, is pure light. Many stories will recount how you can't look on God as pure light or be consumed unless you are pure. God, as that case, can only exist in that purity of light as the Father. And as we learned in this reading from 1 John, and a very popular hymn, in God the Father there is no darkness at all. The community, though, is struggling to understand that balance of the light of God, not being consumed by it, and balancing the darkness of the world in which they lived, which they knew, as we do, can completely block out the love and light that God provides. Once again, I refer back to that story of Jacob and the blessing that God offers at the end of a long night of wrestling. And I share that with you because in these readings, we see that wrestling. And it started right at the crucifixion. And I think that kind of wrestling continues forward to this very day. There are always things that we will wrestle with. But here's the great joy that I think we should lift up most importantly in this second Sunday of Easter. We do wrestle, but we wrestle together. All of you here wrestle as a community. And if we can wrestle together and support one another and also those that may be around us that see our work together as a community, I think we will not only grow stronger as a tight-knit community of the services and people that come to worship, but I think it will build up the community that sits around us, that sees that light and love of God reflected in those things that we do here and also when we leave this place. And for all of that, I say first and foremost, thanks be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for that great gift of light and love. And I urge you all to continue to share the light and the love of God. For it is there where we can grow as a community. And as Christians, share that light so that we will see more light each and every day and love and far less darkness. Amen.
Prayers of the People, found in your service leaflet on page five. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, especially for those involved in the wars in Ukraine and Israel, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and gracious Father, be ever present and so guide and direct our minds and hearts as we seek a faithful and caring pastor for St. John's Church. Please grant us the wisdom of discernment and sustain us during our search. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our only Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, our bishop, for Mark, our cleric, and all bishops and other ministers, and for all who serve God in his church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially those on our prayer list. Amen. 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 Lord, in your mercy, we thank you, Lord, for the birthdays of Andy, Julia, Walt, Jacqueline, Parkey, and Bill, and the anniversary of Trina and David, and for all the blessings of this life. Amen. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page six, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Will you please stand?
The peace of the Lord be always with you. It is lovely to have you all here. I won't take much of your time. I want to point out a couple of quick things. And I want to also note, because after I said it, I realized they probably sounded wrong. I was the one that was supposed to proofread the bulletin. So that's not on anybody else here. And I want to make that clear. Because I know the hymns and what they should have been, and I just missed it. Um, I also want to let you know that after this service, you really should come to the parish hall for coffee hour. I think setup began about sunrise. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm exaggerating there, but it is going to be awesome. And if you would like to volunteer on some Sunday, there is no need to go to that kind of length. You can come, bring whatever you'd like. We'd love to have you host. So more news later, but please do head over through those doors and make a right and go to the parish hall after this. There are a number of things that are listed. We will resume Christian formation for both youth and adults next week. This week we took a pause. There are a number of things, number of things on the calendar to review and there are a number of things we could use some help with in the bulletin on pages 10 and 11. Lastly, this is a notice. If you didn't get one of these, please take a look at it. It is the Spring Tea and Fashion Show for the ladies of St. John's and friends. Pretty wide interpretation. I'm hoping I'm a friend, but I don't know if I can make it. I will see, but do come. I know every year it's done beautifully, and it's a lot of fun, and I just have to uh, hide the checkbook that weekend. It is a wonderful time, and if you can make it, please do join us. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found in your service bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Stand or kneel as is your preference. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We're calling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us receive peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on you in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. in the name of Christ.